Even if you drive an older pre-navigation car like I do, I bet it's full of some low-tech you might be missing. Let's check it out. Sun visors that can extend or become double visors. Power window up and down buttons that are express. They usually have a different icon. One click and then you can let go and they'll do the rest of the job. Pinch protection in your power windows. If the car's fairly recent, it should back off when it encounters resistance. And on more recent cars, the power window switch is a lever. You have to pull it up to make the window go up. That's an improvement from some older cars where you had a push to go up. Pets or kids could do that by accident while hanging out the window and get themselves stuck. Ever see a button back in your trunk? That could be a fuel pump cutoff switch. And are you still unlocking your doors to get out from the inside? On most modern cars, just pull the handle. Manual transmission reverse lockouts can range from having to push the shifter down to get to reverse or pull a little lock up to get to that gear. The door checks on your car probably have multiple positions in between wide open and fully closed. They can be handy in tight parking spots. I assume you know if you've got a car whose rear hatch glass can open separately from the entire hatch. That cryptic little triangle on your gas gauge, that points to the side of the car where the gas cap lives. Handy when you're borrowing an unfamiliar car or renting one. Don't just push your turn signal all the way. Try half clicks. That will either flash as long as you hold it down and then release, or will initiate a series of three or five what are called lane change flashes without you having to cancel it manually. I assume you know about the secret lock on your rear doors that keeps kids from opening the back door. Do you turn your key a couple of clicks to get power for the radio without starting the car? Try doing it the right way. Turn your key backwards from off. That turns on accessory without arming other things like airbags and fuel pumps. Every car has got various dome light settings. You want to learn those. If you jumpstart your car, it's better to connect the black wire to a ground on the body, not to the ground on the battery. Many late model cars have a special stud for just that. Buttons have concave or convex portions of them for a reason. The concave part usually means down, window down, seat down. The convex part that sticks up means up. The brightness control for your dashboard instrument lights probably has a click at the far edge of travel that also turns on your dome lights. Some nicer cars have a remote key fob where if you press and hold the lock or unlock buttons, it will open or close all the windows. Do you know there's a steel backup key inside of your remote fob in many cases? Your tires have built-in indicators, these wear bars in the tread that tell you when it's time to get new ones. In some markets, there are standing lamps on one side of the car. You can light these up on just the side that's exposed to a very skinny street to help keep people from sideswiping you. Next time you struggle to change wiper blades, see if you've got a service mode that moves the arms into the right location to make it easier. And on certain Porsches, when the battery dies, that also disables the button that electrically opens the front hood that lets you get to the battery. To deal with that idiocy, open the fuse box and you'll find a pull-out red terminal that you can use with a battery source you have to provide to jumpstart the front hood unlock motor. Yeah, I don't get it either. Some of you are young enough to never listen to the radio. Then you'll like to know that when you press and hold one of those preset buttons, it memorizes the station you're on. If you're annoyed by your shoulder belt sawing away at your neck, know that most modern cars have height adjustable anchors that can change the angle of that belt coming across you. A lot of power hatchback doors have the ability to set and memorize how far they open to keep from banging into overhead pipes or such in a garage. Sure, almost all these things are in the manual, but who reads that? So while you're adding CarPlay or Android Auto or whatever you're putting in your car, don't forget to also take advantage of those simple things that might be almost as useful, and they're free.